Hi, I'm Alex Williams of Silicon Angle here at the Node Summit, live with theCUBE, our world-class online news streaming service that we do at events like this here at Node Summit with James. James Urquhart, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. It's so good to see you again. Good and to see uh, you. It's kind of weird to be on this side of the discussion with you, having I been know. A, a fellow blogger for so long, but, uh, um, but the, you know, great venue, amazing crowd here at the show, and uh, I'm really excited to be on theCUBE again. The last time I was on was a great time, so. What's up with Node.js and kind of your perspective of the world? Well, I, you know, one, one of the aspects of, of Node that's really interesting, it came up on the panel that I moderated this morning. Um, we had uh, uh, um, uh, Nojitsu and um, uh, Heroku and Azure, and um, Cloud Foundry represented. Um, and we talked about past a little bit, and one of the things that really came out of it is, you know, the, in some ways, Node is just another language. In, um, you know, in the sense that there, there, there are things it's great at, there are things it's not so great at. But I think what's really exciting about, cloud, about Node and the cloud space is it's, it's eventing model and it's JavaScript-based nature right. um, really makes it something that is quite portable and quite kind of um, reassemblable, it componentized by nature. In fact, you heard a lot of the talkers uh, at the show talking a lot about how Node kind of gets you to break down to the smallest denominators right. as quickly as, as possible to make event management that much easier to deal with, to get you know, to help with things like debugging and deployment and other things. That's kind of the nature of where the cloud's taking applications in general in a lot of ways in that um, because it's a very service-based environment, people are beginning to break down capabilities into smaller service units um, and, and, and then bring them together, compose them in different ways, yeah. in ways in, um, that may or may not have been expected up front. Node is a great representation, I think, of a language that takes this into account, um, not maybe not intentionally, but it, it does fit very nicely. And, and one of the things that um, Oren Teich said of, at Heroku is that one of the places we're seeing the Node version of their environment used the heaviest is in machine-to-machine -machine communications. Yes. They have a very high traffic level right. in machine-to-machine -machine communication. And to me, that's really kind of the next frontier. We've done the Web 2.0 thing, and it'll continue to grow. There's a lot of room to grow in that space. Um, you know, Facebook apps, consumerism, but really, you know, the, a big growing area is going to be this machine-to-machine -machine capability where now the the now the automation environment that that underpins a lot of um, uh, autom you know, the traditional automation will become much more cloud-like in that it integrates with third-party components, that it that protects, takes information from some source that's not within the four walls of the company and begins to bring that together. And Node seems to be very well suited to that kind of problem. Yeah, it, it, it does. I mean, and talking to people about how they're using Node.js, for instance, I was talking to uh, uh, Flowdoc, I think that's the name of their company, but they take uh, group messaging and activity streams, but they take activity streams from GitHub, right. they take it from uh, Jira, they take it from email, and they're going to add, start adding Twitter into it. And so Node.js is really, really ideal for that, as they right. say. And it seems like it's, you know, we're hearing a lot of it, you know, a lot of people t saying that it's great for that real-time communication. So that's what it's great at. What is it not so good at? Huh. Well, I think, um, I think when you get into situations where, where thread control um, where concurrency and, and managing what's happening from a concurrency perspective um, gets to be a little bit more detailed and a little bit more fin finesse oriented. Some the kinds of things that like an Erlang would do really well. Okay. Um, I think that's the point at which Node's the venting model means it's, it's much less predictable about what's going to happen when or whether you're even going to have work that is stacked up intended to be completed, but it's not completed yet, right? There's, there's not that serial nature to it. It's much less, it's much more about sort of the flow of information through different things taking their, their part of it and then passing it on to the next thing. When you get into something where you're really getting into um, the need to really finally work at a high performance on a given processor or just in general on computing, um, I think that's the point where a lot of people would say there's some things that Node does that aren't the smartest things to do in those particular architectures. That's interesting. I mean, I, you know, that really then speaks to the need for really good tools, doesn't it? To really be able to see what's happening, you know, with a deployment. For instance, I mean, I think about, um, you know, Joint and the data visualization tools that they have, really to kind of see what's happening inside inside well, the network. And it's a, it's a big reason for something like Instratus to exist as well, right? So tell, tell me, let's talk about that. Yeah. So so Instratus is. Uh, 
uh, is the, the leading enterprise cloud management solution. And by cloud management in this condition, we, uh, the situation, what we mean is the consumption of cloud. Um, so as opposed to being um, a, something that delivers a cloud service, we're about how do you take your applications and consume cloud services in a way that is um, uh, under control, uh, allows you to do some governance around who can do what, potentially um, financial controls, uh, you're making sure that people uh, are only consuming as much budget as they're supposed to be consuming for something. And these are the problems that enterprises deal with when they look at cloud that are very, very, um, they're exemplified by the enterprise. A big difference being, um, in a Web 2.0 space, typically you have a few development teams, um, they have some number of processes, they're growing number, but they're, they're still a you know, well-managed number of processes, and, and the idea is they have to scale these things across hundreds or thousands of nodes. Right. The enterprise problem is, they've got hundreds or thousands of applications. Right. Each of which may scale on an average need of five to 10 nodes. Right. Right, but the problem is each of those applications have different owners. They have different um, requirements. They have different budgets. They different have different uh, uh, compliance constraints yeah. that they have to meet. Policies they need to apply to the cloud environments right. that they run in, and so it's that bringing together the governance and the automation of the application from the application's perspective in a multi-team environment, in a, um, a you know in an enterprise environment that that we really focus on. And so we give you uh, you know uh, basically the one way to think about it is as a console or managing and operating applications in the clouds that you consume for those applications. So managing those applications inside the enterprise, and we're hearing a lot of popularity for Node.js in the enterprise. Is right. that one of the, what are, that's one you just outlined, you know, some real reasons why, you know, it, it has viability there. What are some other reasons that you're seeing? That, that, that they're talking about. That, that enterprises are yeah. talking about Node in particular? Yeah, yeah you know, I, uh, again, I think the when you look at the, it, uh, the types of, of applications in enterprises, they span the full gamut end to end. One of the things that's happening is the cloud has introduced the ability to build some applications that were economically um, unobtainable, frankly, right. in the past. So a lot of big data. Right. A lot of the excitement about big data comes from the fact that you can now experiment with processing data in certain ways. 